On today's post, we are looking at the common, most common mistakes that a firearm uh, owner or carrier can make. Hello everyone, my name is Joseph Radzen IV, your trusted attorney with Radzen Law PLLC. And today joining me is special guest, Terry Johnson. Terry is a licensed attorney here in the state of Michigan, one of Michigan's top criminal defense attorneys, and he's going to share some of his wisdom and what, uh, what he's seen in his cases when it comes to mistakes that firearm owners or carriers can make. Welcome, Terry. Thank you for having me. And you know, I, I don't know that we have enough time to really <laughs> get into the mistakes that firearms owners make, but <laughs> I'll tell you, uh, I, I've seen quite a few. And, and th I'd say the, the first one is always the assumption that I'm right. Mm. And, and you might be right, but you're going to, a lot of people do things that make them wrong. And let me, let me give you an example. Um, you should, in my opinion, never have your firearm uh, in your car outside of its holster. Mm. Because if something were to happen uh, and the police were called and they pull you over and let's say someone said, this guy was waving a gun at me. Um, the police pull you over and it's laying on the seat. Well, now that's confirming that the other person was right that you had a gun and they're gonna make a natural assumption that you were waving it. Um, that, that's, that's one of the mistakes. But the other mistake is, um, the biggest, biggest mistake is showing your firearm to someone else to, I'll use the term, intimidate them. Mm, sure. You know, in other words, people want to um, here, see my gun. I, I don't have to say anything, just look. Right. You know, and that's actually a felony firearm charge because I'm using a weapon, in this case a firearm, to put you in fear. Mm. And that's a two year mandatory minimum uh, to run consecutive uh, in, in prison. Mm. And the judge has no discretion on that. So don't use your firearm to scare people. Your firearm is a tool of... Last resort. Last resort, exactly. And if you have reverted to the point where you have to use your firearm, then use it. Don't show it. Mm -hmm. Don't Because right there I've got a choice if I show it or I pull it out, kind of like the drunk uncle with brandishing, right? Mm -hmm. We've all had that drunk uncle at the picnics, you know, right? That's not what we're talking about. And some people want to pull their firearm, they want to show it because they want to let somebody else know what they have. That's not how that works. So we've got to be very, very careful um, when we produce a firearm. Is there, do you see a, a distinction between firearm owners, maybe they have a firearm they're transporting or that they're, they have in their home versus someone who, the type of cases for someone who is a CPL holder uh, that is carrying a firearm lawfully, but then they do something that is questionable or is illegal and they shouldn't be doing. Is there a distinction in those type of cases? Well, there is because first of all, as a concealed pistol license or CPO holder, there is no prescribed manner in which you must carry in your vehicle, which mm -hmm. is great. So as a CPO holder, I can have it in the holster on my hip. I can have it uh, in the glove compartment. I mean, if I want to dangle it from the rear view mirrors, right? not that I would advise you to do no, so. safety issues. Safety issues, but again, you know, in Michigan, you can have it under the seat however you want it. If you don't have a concealed pistol license, mm. that's where a lot of people get into trouble because they, they, well, it's in the glove compartment. Doesn't matter. In Michigan, the firearm has to be in a a uh, box designed for a firearm. That's right. Right? Not your sock, not a Crown Royal bag or anything <laughs> along those lines, right? It's got to be in a box designed for a firearm at the furthest point back of your vehicle. So if you have a car, it's the trunk. Mm -hmm. If you have a minivan or SUV, it's all the way in the back, right? Cargo area, right. right. What if you've got a truck with a bed? Well, put it that way. You can put it in the seat behind you. Mm -hmm. You know, again, assuming it's a single row seat. Um, and the other part of that is no ammunition. So make sure at that point the ammunition is separate from the firearm. And a lot of people without concealed pistol licenses get into that trouble. Mm -hmm. And that is actually um, what we call CCW in Michigan, carrying a concealed weapon in a motor vehicle 
which is a five-year felony. Right. Now, I do have two videos on that exact thing, both how to transport a firearm legally without a CPL and then right. what a CCW means and how it's charged. Uh, you guys can check those out on the blog page or you know find them on our social media. But one of the things that I see the biggest mistake people making is exactly what you're talking about, which is they call and they say, I have a CCW charge and it's because I was transporting it not the correct way. Right. right, it wasn't in a box, or it had, um, you know, it was somewhere where I could reach it, and these are things that people don't understand. That there are there are sections of the law that allow you to do certain things, and Correct. these are the sections that say don't do it this way. You Correct. have to make sure you're following both: do it this way and don't do it this way. Right. Absolutely. So those are the things that I see the most is transportation issues. People are not following the law on that and it gets them in trouble. And they should follow a trusted source, <laughs> right? A trusted source who can tell you, not the guy on the corner or not the guy that's gotten three felonies who's done the same thing. Mm -hmm. Follow a trusted source. Um, and and that way you know what's going on. Just don't go on the I heard or mm -hmm. can I do or something along those lines. Yeah, and some of them are even, um, you know, I hear people that talk to me, they also know I'm a firearm instructor, so they, they talk about their class that they went through. And some of the things that their legal section talks oh. about is usually very cringy to me because it's like that's not exactly what the law says. So yeah. source, make sure your source of information is is good and wherever you're taking your CPL classes that they're teaching you adequately what the law is because that's the section that's going to either help you keep your CPL or it could get you in yeah. so much trouble that it's suspended. Absolutely and and here's the other part of this you know make sure you know who's teaching the legal portion. Mm -hmm. Before you take the class. Before you take the class. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, if you don't have somebody that knows the law, and this is going to upset some of you out there, and please don't take it out on him, <laughs> take it out on me. Um, police officers do not know the law. They tell you what they write people for, they tell you other things, but I've had many times police officers argue with me about the law but they are not, they're not lawyers. They, they are law enforcement. And they may write you a ticket for something, but you get to court, it gets tossed. Why? Because the, law, the, because the police officer doesn't know the law and what they're supposed to do and how it works. So be very, very careful um, when you're taking your CPL class. That legal portion is very, very, very <laughs> important. Well, I appreciate your insight, Terry, and your you. experiences that you've shared with us, and uh, we'll have to have you out again next time. Thank you, and remember, trusted <laughs> source. If you guys support the Second Amendment, hit that like button. Uh, leave us a comment below as to whether your legal portion in your CPL class you feel was sufficient or insufficient, uh, and please consider sharing this video with someone who may need this information. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you.